Ah. Hey everybody and welcome back to the Unreal Engine live stream. I'm your host Alexander Pascal, and joining me today is Tom Lumen, uh, who's been making some pretty cool stuff lately. Uh, hey Tom, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, second. cool. <laughs> Wasn't sure if you could. So uh, first we're going to go through uh, the news community spotlight, but then we're going to go talk about the VR template. So uh, up first, it's the news. So uh, once again, I'd like to remind everybody that the Epic Mega Jam starts next week. At uh, this time next week will be OC3, which we'll actually be hosting uh, the Oculus Keynote on the Unreal Engine channel um, to uh, kind of show off everything that's coming in that world. But then after that's all over with, we'll actually kick off the Epic Mega Jam. I'll go over the rules, uh, talk to you all about all the specifics, and make sure to go through all the Q&A of that. Um, just wanted to give everyone another reminder. Just coming up next week, the prizes are massive. You can win all kinds of great categories. Tons and tons and tons of teams have already sent me their info, as you can see. Uh, you, you're going to want to get on this as soon as possible. Um, and uh, it's also okay if you don't pre-register. You can still enter without pre-registering with me. So it just really helps us with knowing uh, how, much, <laughs> how much swag to prepare to send out, actually. So that's that. Next up. Uh, as a lot of you may have noticed, uh, the 4.13.1 hotfix is released. Steven Ellis is actually in chat right now talking to people, um, but uh, he's posted this up letting you know that there are over 70 new fixes and changes, and, uh, you know, the not smallest of all of these changes is this. The Daydream SDK 1 released and is now supported. So uh, Daydream is now supported in 4.13.1. Uh, more features are coming to the Daydream support in 4.14, so keep an eye out for that. But we uh, we have, you know, full-on support right now. So grab it. It is in the launcher. As I am speaking, it is in the launcher. Pow. Uh, last bit of news today. Uh, is more than $50,000 awarded to the latest round of Unreal Dev Grants. Uh, so this time around, we gave out a bunch of Dev Grants to people who are making training content out there in the world, including quite a few people who are in chat today. Uh, I don't know if Matthew's here, but I did see uh, Muhammad, uh, Jan's in there. Uh, I think I've seen Cedric for sure. Um, at Virtuous EDU, I didn't see their people. I don't know if Fabrice was in there, but uh, we did give out all of these great prizes to our community members who are very active. If you're on our forums, if you're on Twitter, you've probably seen these names around several times. Um, you know, Matthew makes his, his YouTube series where he just basically takes a, a blueprint node and then just discusses everything you can kind of do with it. Uh, Muhammad's all over with uh, tons of books that he's been making. Uh, all of these guys are absolutely fantastic uh, teachers uh, in our community. So as a way of saying thank you and please keep up this amazing work, Dev Grants. So congrats to all of you. Dun, dun. All right, and, oop, accidentally on the wrong one. <laughs> community Spotlight. Uh, today's Community Spotlight, we're going to start off again with the Answer Hub, Top Karner, uh, Karma Earners. Uh, every week we like to say thank you to everybody who goes on to the Answer Hub, helps each other out, and earns karma by answering questions and giving good comments. So, Night Watcher, you're number one with 385. That's pretty decent. Not bad. Um, uh, Mammonium. Uh, and actually, I'm, I, I don't actually 100% know how to pronounce uh, your username, but that's, uh, that's Muhammad uh, also. So thank you so much for contributing here. You're about to get a, another badge for that. Uh, Deathray, uh, thank you so much. We'll be getting you uh, also an Answer Up Sage badge. And uh, as you all know, I've also got new prestige badges. If you win this three times in a row, I'm trying to get prestige badges out as much as possible. Um, but we have such a backlog of people, I'm still trying to make sure that I have a, a full chart of all of this. So uh, if I have missed you and you have prestige, let me know. I'll just double check really fast through everything and make sure you get your special starred badge. All right, community spotlight. Pow. First things up is a fun interactive. Um, let's see here. So, AFUN Interactive uh, is actually a Korean group that this infor this was actually brought over to me by Min Oh, who does a lot of our uh, art and tech artwork. Uh, he did a lot of the McLaren visualization stuff with that team. Um, you've probably seen him in the background of a few of our videos showing off the McLaren stuff. Um, but these are friends of his uh, that he knows. They've actually been working on uh, other vehicle and architectural visualization stuff. It's just a small group of people um, using UE4 and making VR experiences for enterprise customers. Uh, it's really pretty gorgeous. I think we have a short video here. Uh, Clint? Awesome.
Alrighty. Looks great. Um, cool. Next up. Pow. Next up. So, as a as some of you may already know about Aller, uh, Michael Aller, who will actually be coming down for the Epic Mega Jam judging and uh, award ceremony. Uh, we're going to be flying him out here to Epic to come on stream. He'll be sitting right over where Tom is right there, like we did last year. But um, some of you have also probably already seen this. Aller made a UE4 style guide uh, from Game Making, his, his studio there. Uh, he's put it up on GitHub. Uh, this is all going to be available also in the description of, uh, of the... Um, YouTube video archive if you want to come take a look at this. I'll link it over there too, but uh, come on GitHub, go to Aller's stuff. What you'll see here is that he's made a very lengthy uh, and, and just detailed, super detailed uh, style guide for submitting GitHub pull requests and just writing your documentation for them, um, naming conventions, stuff like that. Things that really help us uh, go through everything. Uh, I, know, I know from personal experience trying to dig through um, stuff that's using strange concepts of what prefixes, suffixes, etc. are, uh, it can be a little confusing for a programmer. So if, if you want to kind of help us out too, we actually uh, took a look over this several times. It's very good. Really, we, we like this structuring. And also this, it shows you how to structure your uh, uh, various folders, etc. Uh, just, just great. Tons of details. I'm not going to go through all of it because it's massive. But if you want to know how to style your GitHub pull requests and your various uh, engine content, this is how to do it. Next up, we have another gorgeous video to show you of Firebird La Perry. And so it happened that at the end of days, the old King Iskander, on the threshold of death, scoured the outer limits of the universe in search of the flower of immortality. Cool. So yeah, as you saw at the end there, uh, uh, John Reese davies is doing the narration and voice stuff uh, for it. It's um, just a gorgeous art piece. I would call it a uh, interactive experience, except for it is very gamey in a lot of ways. There are games to, uh, or game mechanics to interact with a lot of stuff. But um, it, it's a definitely an emotional piece that was put together by a team that very much wanted to tell a story through art and visuals. So um, it's it is uh, out now. Uh, you. You can pick this up for just nine ninety nine. Gorgeous little title. All right, Tom. Tom, where'd you go? There you are, Tom. Oh, thank goodness. There I am. Hey. Hey. Cool. So uh, we've got a whole brand new template that came out in four thirteen. Uh, four thirteen that you made. Uh, it's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. Let's let's talk about some of these new features that people can explore and have fun with. I've got the the template guide over here. All right. Uh, so let's see. So we got the um, one thing that's immediately different from the regular uh, game guides that we that we've put, that we've put out are the, um, is the fact that this template has two maps. Mm -hmm. So you have the first one; it's just for your uh, heads-up display and with a gamepad, or you can have any kind of other uh, input uh, button, basically. And uh, the other one is for VR setups with motion controllers. Um, so if we look at the the first uh, the first uh, GIF uh, down there, yeah. um, you can see that um, the player is basically looking uh, in a direction that he wants to that he wants to move. Then he presses any kind of key, like could be an A button on your gamepad or spacebar on your keyboard, or whatever. At that point, you pin the location, and then you can use your gamepad uh, axis thumbsticks, or you can uh, just look into a different direction. Uh, to sort of like realign your uh, your orientation of the player, and that way you can very easily 
um, a move around uh, the game world. Even if you uh, if your uh, uh, your setup has just one button, you can still move around and reorientate yourself around the world. And um, so that that's pretty neat. And uh, then the second one that is a little more complex, and that is the whole setup with the motion controller. Uh, that's and as you can see, uh, it supports room scale. So the the blue box you see mm -hmm. uh, is the uh, representation of your your uh, your room scale setup. If you if you have one, otherwise it's just simply not shown. And again, he, uh, here you can use your um, uh, your your thumbstick on your your Vive, for example, or on your uh, uh, Oculus Touch. If you have one of those to reorientate yourself again, and it will all work with the room scale that will that will uh, rotate with you. Uh, and the, the neat one about this one is that uh, you can grab. Uh, simulate. You can grab simulated objects in the environment, or anything that you applied your uh, your blueprint interface to, basically. Um, yeah. Now I yeah. Uh, I can see here from from this particular one. Uh, there's you can see on the floor where you're going to end up, and then you can kind of see the room around you. So where you end up is uh, is always going to be in the same real kind of physical position. Like if you're in front of a wall, it won't. Uh, it'll actually show that you're going to be right in front of that wall. There, I see. Exactly, and, and so yeah. uh, so you kind of have to like move within that uh, room scale area, but you can see that box go down. That's a that's such a yeah. So you can you can already pos yeah exactly you can already position your box so that it would be beneficial for you to to move around the space. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty good. And this is using um, uh, the nav mesh to move around too, right? Yes, that's exactly. That is that is a very important thing to note. Actually, is uh, if you are migrating over this stuff to your own levels, you need to um, make sure that your new level also has a nav mesh built. Uh, if for your game you you're really not interested in u using nav matches, even though it's, it's quite a nice way to filter out invalid locations, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, standing on a table, you you possibly you probably don't want that. So and a nav match can very easily filter that stuff out for you. Um, it's basically very simple to get that uh, removed. And I think even in the, the the guide, I talk about how to not use nav match, but use uh, basically roll your own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's easy to change, um, and if you move a little uh, further down, you uh, you have an al an alternate rotation uh, uh, mode, and this is this one this one was made for um, this one was made for the play uh, PlayStation Move because we also support PlayStation uh, VR in this template, and since the uh, the PS Move doesn't have an axis input. You need to use, or you need to use something else. And uh, James Golding actually came up with this idea to use your controller role to realign uh, the uh, orientation, and it feels really, really well. Uh, that's why I always had an option to just enable the boolean. Uh, it's called use control role to rotate. It's also listed in, in the guide, uh, Very so you cool. can change that mode to always use this role instead of uh, using your your thumbsticks. Uh, it's quite neat, actually. It works works pretty well. Cool. Um, all right, so let me hop back over. Getting a few questions out of chat, which is really nice. All right, room okay. skill support and object grabbing. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So the object grabbing is um, done simply through a blueprint interface. Um, so it, whenever you, you create your own actor, it could be you know a new gun or it could be like a bow and arrow. As long as they implement that uh, blueprint interface, uh, you can uh, you can grab the objects and uh, and 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 interact with them just like the the, the cubes, uh, and it's it it should be very easy to change this to for example, press the key, uh, pick up a uh, gun, and then have that gun uh, snap to a socket location instead mm -hmm. of you know keeping the uh, relative location as you can see here. Um, that should be pretty pretty uh, trivial to to update actually if you if you're interested in that sort of thing. Yeah. I could, I could see how it would be pretty simple to just say, uh, get the uh, overlapping objects, sa uh, snap to skeletal mesh's hand socket, and then from there you can just use a toggle for picking up and dropping the gun. Um, for those of you that haven't come out to one of our uh, various events, that's sort of how a bullet train uh, feels when you're using it. It's, it's You snap guns to your hand, and then that kind of also frees your hand up to press other buttons since you don't have to constantly hold down. Yeah, that's quite nice. Um, and then uh, the the final major feature of this is the, of this uh, template is the uh, the fact that we've done some optimizations mm -hmm. both on the uh, in the level itself um, with uh, a checkbox. So if you if you look at and if you select any of your uh, your uh, movable uh, cubes, 
uh, which are blue in the release template, actually. The, um, you can see a, a checkbox that's a um, single sample shadow from stationary lights. And uh, basically, it slightly re reduces the uh, quality or the receiving quality of the shadow for those dynamic objects. But it, it also ca uh, cuts uh, shadow casting time in half. So that is a significant boost for uh, a, a difference in shadow quality that you may not even notice in your game. So that's definitely a very important one to consider, and that's uh, enabled in the template. You can you can uh, just uh, you try try an experiment with that by moving a, a dynamic object in or out of a like lit or unlit uh, or darkened uh, area of mm -hmm. your your lab your map. And um, another important thing is the scalability that we've updated for the the template. So a lot of the things are disabled by default. You can, of course, still enable them. Uh, uh, like uh, ambient occlusion would be disabled, for example. And uh, we have uh, disabled uh, lens flare is definitely dis uh, disabled. And oh, yeah, uh, another few really things are just, just tweaked a little bit. Yeah, that would, that would definitely not, not, not look nice. Mm -hmm. So, um, and if you're interested in, in getting uh, that configuration, uh, over to your own projects. If you create a new VR template project and you just uh, browse to the config folder, you will have find an INI file that's called default scal scalability. And that pretty much has 90% of all of the changes. Uh, so you can just drag and drop that into your own uh, project's config uh, location because it, it doesn't usually have one uh, in place. So uh, at that point, you already have like a bulk of the, a bulk of the changes uh, and the rest is all in, uh, located in the default engine. And that's all covered as, uh, as well in the, in, the, in the guide, too, if you're uh, interested in, in migrating over those changes. Um, all right. There's a, yeah. Can, can roll down a little bit here. Yeah, the rest is, uh, oh, yeah, th this was a really nice one. So if you're interested in, in a walkthrough of a, or a live walkthrough of someone using it uh, or discovering the project, basically, while using his Vive, uh, Real Pictures has a has a walkthrough of it, uh, which I quite enjoyed. Uh, so I definitely recommend checking that one out too. If you're uh, if you're looking to get into uh, the motion controller uh, level implementation, and then the rest of the guide is basically talking about some of the uh, way that things are set up and how to migrate and mm -hmm. how um, and to make sure that you have a nav mesh in your in your level. Yeah, that kind of stuff. And this is this is actually something quite a few people had uh, asked us. And so, when we get to the Q and A portion of it, we can talk more on it. But uh, yeah, migrating content over it's very hel uh, helpful because yeah, you probably don't need everything. But if you want the hands to do everything, then nice little chunk here. Yeah, and and in this case, the migrate tool is mm -hmm. is your friend. You just need to know which file to select, mm -hmm. uh, which is. Um, Gonna, the easiest way, to, the easiest one to select would be the pawn of the implementation you're interested in. Uh, I guess that should that should pretty much bring over all of the stuff that you need, including all the materials and uh, hand controllers and that, that stuff. Yeah. Oh, and here is a screenshot that uh, where you can see if you're not interested in using the the navigation mesh, this screenshot is which you can see is in a BP motion controller, and the function is called trace teleport destination, as you can see in the top of the screenshot. Um, and uh, there we call a function called project point to navigation. Mm -hmm. If you're not interested in using navigation, but you want to use your own thing, for example, check the normal of the impact, and if it's uh, if it's a flat surface, you can teleport there or whatever. You can just remove this and and basically fill in your own. Huh. Well, then that's really helpful if you just want to roll your own. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, Let's see here. I think that actually we're going to end up doing a lot more Q&A than the actual talk about the VR template. Yes, yeah, a lot of things of are, are covered in the thing. Yeah, yes. so uh, are covered in the guide. So, I mean, if there's still some uh, some questions, we can probably go through them real oh, quick. Yeah, absolutely. So um, so let's see here. Um, this pointer uh, that we're using here, will it work with terrain? Uh, it doesn't deform to terrain. Uh, but you can uh, you you can quite easily uh, change the alignment of the mesh mm -hmm. to use the uh, impact normal. Yes. Uh, which uh, so you can have it aligned with the uh, with the terrain. Uh, it, it, well, it doesn't really deform uh, along with the terrain, uh, so the box might look a little a little strange. Um, so you may you may want to you know make the box a little a little higher if that's uh, if that's uh, what you're doing with the terrain so it, it doesn't so it won't uh, look as as, as odd, mm -hmm. which is basically just 
increasing the scale uh, during during setup. I think there's a function called setup out uh, setup outline. Uh, you can adjust the scale of it, and then you basically uh, should look fine with string. Alrighty, um, let's put that up because it looks neat. Uh, is it possible to set up mirror reflections for VR? I believe that we've gone over this in some other streams about setting up actual reflections in virtual reality. But yeah, I mean, we have we we recently added a uh, a mirror reflection actor. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not sure. Did we test that? In, I haven't I haven't used that one yet, so I wouldn't be able to say for sure. Mm. But I would I would bet it it works, but it's very expensive. Yeah, one so one way or the other, doing any kind of reflection very sounds very expensive in VR because it's it's not. Two times it's four, because it's you try then back again. Yeah, so. and it's already the 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 reflection uh, actor already has a caution like a hey, usual caution because this is going to be expensive. So yeah, in VR this would be um, tricky to have enough performance. Yeah, uh, if you got two 1080s loaded up though, you you have fun with that. I don't know. <laughs> and it's all of your users bad, have though. 1080s. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's probably not actually that bad, but. Uh, but doing reflections in VR, always remember that the more um, kind of rendering layering you're adding, the, it's going to just build in cost massively because you're rendering to two eyes. Um, let's see here. Uh, so, let's see here. Next up, um, how do you connect replace objects with controller sockets? Uh, for example, picking up a gun, having to. Okay, so um, uh, basically, kind of going back to how do you pick up a gun and have it. Uh, stick. Uh, what you can do is you can select your skeletal mesh uh, if the hands are skeletal meshes, I, I believe that they are. Uh, and then um, you can select a bone in there and uh, in the actual skeletal um, I want to say it's the uh, it's the skeletal uh, editor, the skeleton editor menu. You can just select whatever bone, yeah. right click add socket, and then you name that socket whatever, and then in the blueprint you can say attach to socket attach the skeletal mesh in there and then s just type out the socket's name and then that will attach whatever mesh you say to go there. So that one's pretty straightforward. There's just a uh, attach to skeletal mesh socket kind of note in there. I'm trying to remember the exact name, but that's that's just that's kind of the gist of it. It's not too uh, uh, crazy to do. Um, uh, how do you disable the rotation effect when teleporting? Um, Tom? Oh, yep. I can't hear yeah, it. so uh, I'm not entirely sure which effect he means, but there's um, a, a lot of the uh, effects are components. So if you just don't want to have the ring, or if you don't want to have the arrow that uh, points to you, the, the arrow shouldn't be uh, uh, visible unless you're explicitly changing the direction of it. If you're if you're also done with that, all of these components can be individually individually deleted, or um, you know, or or just have its appearance changed, basically. So. I can probably uh, ask him on the forums what he means exactly by this question because mm -hmm. um, I'm entirely sure. And uh, if any of you uh, have more questions that we can't quite get to this, just hop on down to the forums, uh, ask away. Uh, not only uh, are other people helping each other out, we already found like a bunch of people answering each other's questions, but uh, we'll try to hop in there and answer whatever we can. Um, let's see here. Uh, talk about the rendering options that have been disabled. That's not a question. You have a question mark at the end of it. But yeah, if you'd like to expand on some of those that you well, consider. rendering options are disabled. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it's uh, so one of the major ones that uh, that are is disabled uh, or cost wise at least is the uh, ambient occlusion um, or screen space ambient occlusion uh, and uh, some of the other ones you can actually see when you. Um, Open up the, uh, the 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 config file. Let's see. So I've I've covered a few. I think um, lit translucency, I think is disabled uh, because some of that adds a static cost uh, that you may not be interested in. Uh, the in the levels we've uh, set all of the or uh, most of the shadows to just to be uh, static uh, unless when um, specifically needed for the for the boxes we wanted to have some of the cheaper shadows for the boxes um, and then you can see all of them in um, or at least most of them in the default scalability I and I so the lens flare okay. quality is changed motion blur quality uh, mm. the uh, the one of the other f things that is important is the scene color format format has changed mm -hmm. um, the uh, according to the the experimentations that 
Epic has done in uh, with Bullet Train, using a different scene color format doesn't change the quality uh, noticeably, but it does really uh, make a, an impact on performance in VR. So that has been uh, altered. We've enabled um, st instant stereo rendering for VR. Uh, yep. Depth of field quality uh, is down. Um, and let's see, another option I see is fast blur threshold. Um, and let's see, uh, yeah, some of the texture filtering. So there's quite a bunch. And you can, so I would recommend uh, opening up the default scalability uh, and I for all the commands that have been uh, changed. And the um, default engine I and I also has, an, has a, let's see where it's listed under um, uh, render settings in mm -hmm. that uh, file. And you can see some of the things that we've disabled uh, or some of the things that we've enabled. Um, you can see the eye adaption quality has changed as well. Um, so definitely have a have a look into that one. Um, it's like a, it's like a lot of a lot of little tweaks in the I and I then, so it's probably just worth digging through. Uh, yeah, and uh, a lot of these are exposed through the uh, mm -hmm. project settings. Um, it's just that the uh, default scalability we don't have a wizard for that, so uh, that was done manually. All right, that's that's probably a good place to start and find everything then. Um, uh, what is the recommended approach to allowing the player to teleport onto objects besides the floor? And I'm going to throw in uh, another question that's very related to this. What about dynamic objects? Right. Um, so to teleport onto another object, first of all, you need to make sure that your navigation mesh is big enough, assuming you're using the uh, motion controller mm -hmm. uh, uh, implementation. Um, so it has to be high enough and the the object has to be big enough for uh, to be even considered uh, a, a navigatable area. And if it's a dynamic object, um, there is a way, uh, there's an option to enable uh, runtime recompilation uh, of nav meshes. Yep. It's a, but it's if, a it actually, if it's constantly moving, you don't want to have that uh, mm -hmm. constantly being updated because there, there will be some lag. So in that case, you will have to maybe add your own uh, layer on top of what we've already done uh, and just say, okay, if it's a if it's an, an an actor of this type that we hit, we will also allow it, and then just filter on, hey, if, is this a, a flat surface off this object that I just uh, that I just pointed to, and then also allow that to be a valid uh, yep. teleport destination. That that makes perfect sense. That could be one way. Yeah, uh, especially uh, when we're talking about in VR space and having to uh, trade off performance costs. Uh, this this object uh, scene that we have here, where it's just like a ton of cubes that are everywhere, you probably don't want those dynamically rebuilding your your nav mesh at runtime all over the place. Like if they scatter, it might uh, cause a slight lag up all of a sudden. Yes, and there's and there's also some latency in having that rebuild. Yeah. I believe. Uh, yeah. So and, it might take um, it a second so to like, settle that would not in. Be, that would not be great for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I would maybe recommend it if you have like a major scene change, like if you're in a large level and like a big bridge kind of like comes down, let that thing have the dynamic uh, uh, nav mesh. But I wouldn't do it for just dynamic stuff sure. scattered around the room unless you were very specifically building your game for that kind of development. Um, but all right, um, uh, does teleporting make sure that you don't overlap your chaperone with walls uh, so that you don't end up walking through a wall? Uh, it doesn't check the wall actually. It mm -hmm. just checks for. Uh, it just makes sure that um, the player ring is in a valid position, and the wall is not checked um, because I would, you know, if you want, you can you can do that, but uh, I'm not entirely sure if that is a, a, a perfect option. All right. Um... Let's see here. I'm sure that if you really wanted to uh, to create that, you could do it with just a few like line traces uh, coming out of the corner, or like a couple of just tests coming out of each of your four corners, or just making sure nothing is. Oh, we lost Tom. Well, he was getting a little choppy there for a second, but it looks like um, something happened uh, with his internet or ours, and we have unfortunately lost Tom for. Uh, this we're gonna try to call him back really fast, which is why you're seeing a bunch of stuff blinking right here. So sorry, technical difficulties. Please bear with us. Um, let's see here. Uh, but to further my point, there uh, just do I guess a line trace between each of those four walls. You could probably um, test against that, and then uh, just not allow it to teleport you if you're colliding with something. Huh. 
that's unfortunate. Hmm. Oh? Maybe? Ah? Uh, well, worst case scenario, I'll try to answer as many of these. And just remember, um, the forums, you can go straight to our, our forum post for this thread, uh, or for this stream, and uh, just post in that thread. We'll, we'll respond to you as soon as we can. Terribly sorry that he dropped. That's actually kind of unusual. Um, Clint, Clint is trying. He is, he is typing like the wind. Um, better than the wind, even. The wind is not particularly good at typing, unlike Clint, who is going very fast. Um, okay. All right. Um, aliens abducted him. That's, a, that's probably, a good, uh, probably a good reasoning there, uh, Victor probably abducted um i i oh okay cool so it's me and black box you're gonna chill out for for a second here um so uh i guess in f we're not gonna have much okay so we're gonna try to restart the system and bring him back in um cool it's just gonna take us one second thanks for bearing with us uh it's live as usual something tends to mess up ever so slightly and then oh i, I lost my my black box buddy we were hanging out here there we go thank you we're friends now. He, this is my new guest, Clint. <laughs> yes, he's uh, he's our uh, new one. Um, oh yeah, uh, Allers in chat uh, again. Um, just I'm gonna just throw out a few things again. Uh, uh, OC3 that's coming up. You can probably run into a ton of our people. They're gonna be there. I think we have a blog post coming out soon with a bunch of information. So stay tuned for that. Um, I'm gonna be at TwitchCon, so I'm actually I'm actually gonna leave from this stream, uh, go grab some stuff upstairs, run out the door, and then go to uh, get some stuff and get in an airplane, and go straight over to California. So if you're going to TwitchCon, uh, hit me up on Twitter or wherever. Let me know. I'd love to shake hands and, and say hey. You know, it's gonna be a pretty fun one. Uh, I think uh, the Paragon team's gonna be there. Tori's gonna be there to represent uh, Paragon and Fortnite. We're gonna have our um, we're gonna have just tons of people over there, so come on by, say hey. Magic box? Oh, okay. Well, we're gonna try one last time. Uh, and worst case scenario, oh, it's a there we are. There he is. Okay, cool, cool. I was. Uh, so the answer to the last question was no. <laughs> hey, the answer to the last question, no. What was our last question? got lost oh uh, uh, uh yes the chaperone walls don't right now currently yeah they do don't that. they don't check for wall clipping yes um yeah but uh, uh this is probably something you could do yourself with some simple line traces between the walls to make sure nothing's colliding with it um it's it's just not built in by default but not something impossible to make on your own pretty quickly i feel um let's see here what was the logic behind making the motion controllers a separate bp the setup is completely different than the vive startup guide so, oh, I, uh, uh, well, so while making the project, uh, the uh, I first started having it all in one blueprint, uh, but then it became less easy to reuse and migrate, and also there was a lot of code. Or like, there was more code duplication and more components uh, to manage. Uh, so in the end, it was just easier to split those two and have just one uh, one place to uh, to make changes for. Uh, for the hand specifically, uh, so it was just an easier workflow, basically, and easier to you know sort of like deal with your uh, deal with your code mm -hmm. to have a little bit of a split. That makes sense then. Um, okay. Um, okay. So there's actually quite a few questions of why did you decide in here? Uh, uh, why did you decide to mirror the hands uh, the hands V's uh, having a separate controller for each hand? Um, so I guess I guess because it's yeah it's like uh, left and right hand. Yeah. The, so they probably. they use the same skill to match and mm -hmm. they're just inverted. Uh, they use yeah. Uh, yeah yeah again it's the same the same answer. Okay. So it's just better to keep them separate like that. Um, will this work for multiplayer? Uh, is it rep is anything built in to be replicated? Uh, it's not tested for multiplayer. Um, so uh, yeah, it's it's we didn't make it for multiplayer. Okay, uh, so it's definitely something we wanted we wanted to do. Uh, so perhaps in uh, another edition, I don't know. Hmm. 
Yeah, uh, it shouldn't be too difficult to make multiplayer uh, because there isn't a lot of functions that are being called that are required for multiplayer. So mm -hmm. it should very be very easy. Yeah, probably just uh, replicating like locations of things more than anything else because it's just about being able to visually see where the person is and then yeah and especially if you're not interested in seeing the other person's uh preview uh yeah. because that is the bulk of what's uh dynamic about this whole uh, project so mm -hmm. uh any difference between choosing mobile and desktop when creating this uh project template so this de this template is uh made or and designed for uh desktop uh, I did run the HMD only map on and on a Gear VR, and it did work. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just uh, there, you know. You need to make, you need to set up your own mapping, and you need to go through the Android or the Gear VR setup pages on the official docs to make sure that the project settings are all right. Uh, that needs to, you know, you need to make sure that that is uh, done. It's it's not done by default for you. Okay, so just a few adjustments, and it's doable. Um, yes. Is it possible to set up the Steam controllers so that you can visually see them and where the user is interacting on them? Um, oh, yeah. That well, the hands are where the yeah. Steam controllers uh, are located. Uh, they uh, have, yeah, they basically only have a slight offset to make them feel in a more natural position compared to where your hands are mm -hmm. in VR space. But, yeah, that's the, that is the location of, of the, the Vive controller. Yeah, um, I think, uh, I think, this one might be kind of based off of those uh, controllers. Sometimes you see in a game where when you start touching the controller, it highlights with like a dot on like the uh, Vive's touchpad. Oh, yeah. So... so as you press them, they light up. And, and I feel like that one's pretty straightforward, too, because it's just as you do input actions, you highlight uh, different parts yes, of the Yes, and uh, the, the, the engine release comes with a... Uh, a model version of the Vive. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, actually part of the VR editor, and so you have to enable show engine content in your content browser. Then you will uh, be able to search for Vive. You'll see the controller, and the material that comes with that one has some uh, dynamic properties, so you can highlight the different buttons on it. Uh, so there is there is some basic support for the uh, for you available in terms of the art, uh, but you know you'll have to do the the uh, your own highlighting for that. Cool. Um, so yeah, it's possible, and there's some tools in there for it. It's not pre-built, but it is it is very possible to do. Um, Tom, you've worked on multiplayer and replication. Could you talk about how you would replicate each player's HMD transform so each player could see the other's head movements for VR? Uh, right. Well, they are basically just components. Uh, they're basically just stack mesh components. Um, so you could just. Uh, enable the replication, the movement replication on a static mesh, uh, if that's what you're interested in. Uh, that should already work for you. Um, yeah, that should already be enough. Yeah, it should, um, yeah, that should be it. It's, it's basically a checkbox in the static mesh uh, component, right? I feel like uh, that one's pretty straightforward, pretty easy to do. Um, can you use teleportation without uh, the use of nav mesh? Um, just teleport on flat surface in this level. And this is something you were bringing up: is that in your guide you actually talk about how to convert, right? Uh, yes, exactly. There's there's a screenshot uh, bottom of the guide to show you. Hey, this is where the whole uh, dependency on navigation mm -hmm. mesh uh, comes into place. And uh, you can also check out the other map, the HMD map, uh, because that, that uh, or is already uh, not using a navigation mesh, but it's just using, it's just checking against flat services. So if the, if the Z is up, basically. Okay. Um, do you know, um, are you also more limited in the light map resolutions as well if you develop for VR or is this no issue? Uh, well, that is, uh, would be a video RAM thing. So I bet that would not be a, a, a game changer for VR. Yeah. Um, I would, I wouldn't say this makes a big difference. Yeah. It's a, since VR is, I feel like anytime it's VR, it's like 99% GPU based issues. So if you're, it's like, that's the thing that most people worry about is make sure they're not overtaxing GPU. But if it's on VR, um, then yeah, you're probably okay. Um, Cool. Uh, those seem to be the majority of the questions that we're getting in, and I think that there's probably a couple that may be a little out of your field. So um, if you have a question for us and it didn't get answered here, remember just hop on over to the forums, drop them in the forum thread, and we'll get to the ones that we can as soon as we can. 
Um, but that's, uh, that's all that we have for today. Uh, Tom, thank you so much for coming out and talking about this amazing VR uh, template. It's really no cool and it helps everybody just get going and running with VR very quickly. Um, just a couple quick reminders again. Next week, Epic Mega Jam. Don't forget, go sign up. It's awesome. Uh, OC3, our people are going to be there. Stay tuned for more details on that one coming up on our blog. And uh, I'm about to run up TwitchCon, so see you there if you're going to be there. Um, but other than that, that's everything, guys. Uh, we'll see you around. See ya.